we were to believe that the ground is sitting here, and this is coming straight across the top of the dirt, we can now dig a hole and set this to grade because this Marlex street all allows us to bend this sprinkler head any way that we want to go with it. And that saves us a lot of time and a lot less digging. We now have added the module, so we have room to place another zone in here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a jumper wire. When you cut the pipe, it's important that you cut it at a very good 90 degree angle. Let some of the water drain out. And when you do this in the ground, it's also a good idea to have a deep hole underneath the pipe to collect the water that will run out of the pipe. Now we're going to put the T. This way, when there's water in the ground, it will not corrode the splice. Now we're going to do the other side. Power's still on from the controller, and you can hear the clicking. That means this is a functional solenoid. It's working. But no water's coming out because we have the water turned off. Just put the cover back on it. And we're going to leave the sod off so that the owner knows where this valve is in the future. Now I'm going to turn on the water. Now we're going to turn the zone on and we see that it works. Now that we have zone 3 turning on with the new solenoid, we have some problems with this zone. Here is another uh, leaking head, similar to one that we looked at earlier. It's wasting a lot of water. And so we're, this is all the water coming off the side. And so we're going to replace this head. The owner wants to plant some flowers in this area in front of these shrubs. So we're going to want to add a sprinkler head right here. And we're going to do that by connecting to an old sprinkler head that was capped off behind these shrubs. The yellow flag indicates where the capped off head is that we're going to use to feed the new sprinkler head. The two yellow flags indicate heads that are too low that need to be raised up so they spray over the grass. And this orange flag is where, where we're going to add another sprinkler head as the owner says it's always getting dry here. And as we can see, there is no sprinkler head. So we're going to connect onto that pipe and put a new sprinkler head here. I've now installed a cycle stop valve. This will now regulate the pressure to the tank so that the pump will not start on and off. As you can look at the gauge, you can see we're now at a steady 32 pounds, whereas before we were jumping between 60 and 20 pounds, time after time, which will wear out your pump. So we have solved our cycling problem and our overpressurization problem. In the first part of the video, we learned how to do common tasks and troubleshooting of residential sprinkler system above ground. In the second part, we took those lessons and applied them to a real-life situation in the field. We located and replaced the valve solenoid. We placed different types of sprinkler heads and nozzles, raised heads, added heads, and moved heads. A few days ago, I wrote down the prices of materials we use today if purchased at my local hardware store. The cost came to a little under $80. At my contractor prices, this real-life job was $824. So if you had done it yourself, you'd have done it in a day and saved almost $750. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned what you needed to know to save some money. And if you'd like to learn how to do this as a business, please visit my website, irrigationrepair.com, for more information.